Chairlift Chats. I'm Bill Doble, and I'm here with John Jacobs of Reliable Racing. And I have always admired what your dad and mom started how many years ago? Oh, 1965. 1965. Actually, further back to 62. Okay, you told me a great story. They had a, they had a, a, a little ski shop. They were doing some things. But the, also on the side, we're doing, printing some uh, racing bibs and the like. But really didn't have a, a business going. But then tell well, me about how Reliable Racing came well, about. Well, my dad was moonlighting. He, he moved us to Glens Falls in 1958 to take a paper uh, job selling paper in New York City. And uh, his father was a paper mill um, engineer and knew the people at Finch Prine in Glens Falls. And after being the, the, the coach at University of Colorado, my dad actually hired Bob Yaddy into that job. And uh, then he moved on and wrote the rule book for NCAA skiing. And then he went up to Steve Oak Springs and ran the uh, Holliston Hill and the um, Chamber of Commerce. So, folks, if you haven't seen it already, look up Tom Jacobs. The guy was absolutely a legend in the sport, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and uh, so, but it was time to get a real job. My mom had had, they'd had three kids by then, broke. <laughs> Let's go back east and, and go to work. So, but he moonlighted. He started teaching skiing at Hickory Hill in Warrensburg, about 45, half an hour north of Glens Falls. And then the Brandt brothers opened West Mountain in 1962 invited my dad to start the uh, ski school there and to open the rental shop, which is what they did. And that's kind of where it all started. Um, at a, after a couple of years, they decided to move the shop into Glens Falls and uh, occupied space in a bike shop that would, that would close in the, in the wintertime and reopen in the summer. So Tom had a lot of connections. He found bamboo from certain purveyors and found a timing system from another purveyor from New Jersey and then um, started printing bibs in his, in his basement. And nobody was really doing anything. No, not really. The there was a company out west called uh, Goodwin Coal out of Sacramento that was doing some, some of this, but um, nobody in the east was doing this. So uh, he would get phone calls. Um, hey, can you sell me some bamboo? Can you make me some bibs? And at one time he had to deliver a rush job to Bromley Outing Club. Uh, delivered the bibs, and the guy said, well, you should, guys are sure reliable. What should I make the check out to? And Tom was like, well, uh, how about reliable racing? <laughs> and then it was born. <laughs> yeah, it was born, yep. And it, and it rolled on from there, and he kept on building. I can remember going over to races at West Mountain and, and seeing Tom out there and reliable racing. I mean, it, it, everything just kind of rolled and rolled and rolled. Yeah, it sure did. Uh, the, the one, I, I guess, the first thing that I was aware of that really... Um, position reliable racing were the breakaway poles. Breakaway got its genesis. My dad would go over to um, Scandinavia and hang out with the U.S. Nordic team. He was kind of representing Elon in those years. And he ran into some guy from Sweden uh, who had developed a flexing slalom pole. And it was called Snow Feather. And this is 1977. And, um, and Tom was so impressed that he asked uh, fellow if he could import and be the guy in the United States and they said sure yeah sure so uh, we brought in a hundred feather base uh, feather gates um, that was 1978 the first order went to St uh, Snowbird actually they bought all hundred of them hmm. um, a year later the Swedes decided they didn't want to do it anymore they, they decided they were going to shut down production so my dad asked them well can, can we continue and the whole reason my dad was interested in a flexing slalom pole was because we wanted, we had met a guy from New Jersey who developed a coin operated timing system, and which was untenable with bamboo or non flexing poles because he came out of the snow. Right. So he, his real it, original interest in, in the flexing pole was, um, was, was for self timing, coin operated racing system is what we call it. And we installed our first one in 1979 at, at Copper Mountain. And that went on to become. The Marlboro Ski Challenge and the Labatt Ski Machine. We had the top 30 resorts in the United States at one time. We had one resort, Taos, that did more racer starts in one season than in NASTAR's entire history up to that point. Unbelievable. So, so many of us get a weekly mailing, Wacky Wednesday mailing from Reliable Racing of all the yep. neat things that you've got there. But really, the business was built not on 
so much selling to individual consumers like me or other people as much as dealing with all of those areas and the race we, groups. And we were everywhere. So you were doing, you were doing yeah. polls, you were doing timing, you were doing a lot of fencing, yep. bibs, banners, yep. you name it. Yeah, yeah, the whole, the whole gamut. And, and lights as well, right? Well, now, yes, recently we've added Ultratech lighting, which is a product called Snowbright, which is mag magnetic induction and uh, the only lighting on the market that's really designed for snow. But yeah, I mean, at one time we were attending um, the Vegas SIA show. We had Sixtons uh, boots and and uh, gloves and all kinds of stuff. Um, and we did that. We, we actually were, were importing and distributing Yulfa helmets back in the 90s. And we were the kind of the hurts of the... Uh, I still have mine. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I caught you on film there, yes. Um, so Yulfa was the number two brand in the country at one time. Yeah. Behind behind uh, Boeri, uh, so we've been we're all over the place doing a lot of different things. So what are in, in, in just a, a, a little short piece? What are the biggest challenges that you've seen in terms of when the business were really started rolling in the late seventies to what you're facing now? Well, um, we were the first direct mail catalog of ski racing gear, both to consumers and to ski areas and clubs and organizers. Um, we installed our direct mail catalog system, a big hungry HP 6000 in 1987. And at one time we were publishing upwards of 300,000 catalogs. And with the advent of uh, the internet, we were first to transition from brick and mortar to catalog to internet uh, seamlessly using a, a truck application that varied the front end to the back end. So mm -hmm. we had fulfillment capability that nobody else had. Even the big guys. Amazon wasn't around at that point. Right. Backcountry.com was not around at that point. We're talking mid 90s. Right. Mid to late 90s. So at, at the early stage of internet online, uh, it, it was great for us. Now it's not so great for us. Everybody and their brothers. Everybody, everybody looks like an online purveyor, even, even the little ski shop down the street. So what's next for Reliable Racing and John Jacobs? Well, you know, my dad's um, philosophy was control the brands as much as you can. Make, make your relationships with, with brands that nobody else has or can get. And we kind of moved away from that in, in the 2000s and the teens. But we're moving back to that philosophy because of backcountry, because of Amazon. We don't like competing against our suppliers, like some I should probably not mention, mm -hmm. but they all are doing direct-to-consumer now. So we, we focus our attention on brands like Vola. Vola, the oldest wax company in the world. Mm -hmm and the only one that was originally a wax company for skis. So we're the importer and exclusive seller of Vola helmets, wax tools. Beyond Dex is another one. Beyond Dex is a company in um, uh, Sweden that has their production in Poland, and they are an OEM for several brands that most people would instantly recognize if they're into ski racing. But we import directly Beyond Dex speed suits and gear and clothing and so on. And of course on the Business to business side, you know, Breakaway is our core product. Uh, we are exclusive at Beaver Creek for the last three world championships. Uh, Breakaway is used at Lake Louise as well, and I would have to say 70 to 80 percent of um, EISA colleges and uh, ski racing academies in the East use, use Breakaway. So no slowing down for John. No, Jacobs. no, I'm you know <laughs> still banging away. There you go. You well, it looks like we're at the end of our chairlift ride. Yep. Jake. Always great to see you. Yeah. Thanks. Love your boots, by the way. I'd like to hear it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah.